Item number, SCP-622, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. All cans and containers of SCP-622 are to be immediately transferred to Site-16. The formula for SCP-622 must be contained from the public by any means necessary. Any commercial trade of products containing SCP-622 should be documented, and preferably, intercepted before delivery. Any persons or organizations in possession of SCP-622 are to be taken in for questioning. Handling SCP-622 will require seal-proof gloves, hand lotion, and at least one canteen of water per personnel present. In the event of a containment breach, the immediate area affected by SCP-622 is to be quarantined for no less than 24 hours and hosed down with regular water shortly after. Addendum 6221. In light of tests 6221 through 6223, all future testing of SCP-622 must take place outside of Site-16's air circulation system. Addendum 6222. SCP-622 is not to be used outside under any circumstances. Additional containment procedures are only available to Security Level 4 personnel and above. As per protocol, description. SCP-622 is the chemical composition data expunged, also known as developed by the chemical company under the trade name Desert in a Can. SCP-622 was originally marketed as a security aid for large businesses to incapacitate intruders in a similar vein to tear gas or pepper spray. According to chemical company, SCP-622 also doubled as a cleaning agent and insecticide, but due to its hazardous nature, chemical company was shut down in 19 before any more products of this nature could be manufactured. As of there are at least documented cans of desert in a can remaining, most of which are still in possession and use by the following companies. According to the directions, one layer of SCP-622 is applied to hallways during a break-in or robbery. When applied, SCP-622 becomes odorless and colorless. Upon application, all moisture in the immediate area is absorbed by SCP-622, creating an easily cleanable salt-like crust over the applied areas, identified to be the compounds sodium chloride, magnesium sulfate, and when SCP-622 is exposed to organic life, the immediate effects are dehydration, dried eyes, and profuse sweating, which is quickly absorbed by SCP-622. Other effects include a significant drop in blood pressure, increase in heart rate, dizziness, and chills. For more information, see Test Log 622-3. According to the can's warning label, SCP-622 dissipates after 12 hours, but according to Test 622-1, SCP-622 can last up to 24 to 36 hours. Tests 622-2 and 622-3 show that SCP-622 will only dissipate in 12 hours when Security Levels 3 and up refer to Test Log 622-2 and 622-3. Test Log 622-1 Inorganic testing of SCP-622 to determine shelf life of chemical compound data expunged in an isolated environment. Procedure SCP-622 applied in isolated hallway K and viewed through remote monitoring devices. Moisture measured and monitored by electronic instruments. For a control, hallways K6 and K7 were also monitored for humidity content, averaging at 20% relative humidity. Results In 12 hours, relative humidity around SCP-622 remained unchanged at 0%. Despite the label's claim of dissipating in 12 hours, the area did not rise in humidity. It took until nearly 26 elapsed before the relative humidity rose to 1%. The relative humidity stayed at 1% for nearly an hour more, 
slowly rising to 2% after the 27th hour. SCP-622 did not completely dissipate until 35 hours and 28 minutes. The final relative humidity capped at 19%, 19.26% with significant figures, for the next four weeks, and remained there as of writing. It is undetermined if it is a result of SCP-622 removing all excess moisture from the construction phase of Site-16, or if there is a chemical component that does not dissipate. Test Log 622-2 Inorganic testing of SCP-622 to determine shelf life of chemical compound data expunged in a controlled environment. Procedure Before SCP-622 was applied in Hallway K, four buckets of water, equivalent to the water content of an average human being, were placed in the aforementioned hallway. As with Test 622-1, Hallway K was isolated, applied with SCP-622, and viewed through remote monitoring devices. Moisture measured and monitored by electronic instruments. For a control, always K6 and K7 were also monitored for humidity content, averaging a 20% relative humidity. Results. In 12 hours, all four buckets of water were completely dried up. The relative humidity stood at 12% until 25 hours had passed finally capping at around 19%, 18.87% with significant figures, after 35 hours elapsed time. When applying significant figures to the control rooms, the average relative humidity has dropped from 20.24% to 20.17%. It is unknown whether this is directly a result of SCP-622, Site-16's air system, or a combination of the two. Test Log 622-3 Organic testing of SCP-622 to determine shelf life of chemical compound data expunged in a controlled environment. Procedure Two D-Class personnel were requested by Dr. Z. Subject D-254, male Caucasian, 24 years old, 87 kilograms, 169 centimeters, was given a canteen of water prior to entering Hallway K. Subject D-255, male Caucasian, 46 years old, 92 kilograms, 172 centimeters, was not given any water prior to entering Hallway K. As with tests 622-1 and 622-2, Hallway K was isolated, applied with SCP-622, and viewed through remote monitoring devices. Moisture measured and monitored by electronic instruments. For a control, hallways K6 and K7 were also monitored for humidity content, averaging a 20% relative humidity. Results Almost immediately after entering the affected area, both subjects complained of exhaustion. Subject D254 immediately began drinking from his canteen. Subject D-255 attempted to struggle with D-254 over the canteen, but found himself too weak to fight. D-255 starts visibly hyperventilating around 8 minutes elapsed time. D-255 collapses at 10 minutes elapsed time, and does not get up. Subject D-254 notices a visible mist coming off his canteen, reports his water is evaporating, and needs more. Agent P sent in to give him more water, reports on how dry the air is. Subject D-255's flesh is visibly At 15 minutes elapsed time, Subject D-254 runs out of water, complains about being hungry. Agent P returns with multiple bottles of brand sports drinks, a bucket of water, and several granola bars. Subject D-254 was seen dunking his head into the bucket of water before pouring it on himself and consuming sports drinks and granola bars. The water on D-254's hair and clothes immediately dried up. At 26 minutes elapsed time, Subject D-254 collapses from malnutrition. For the next 10 hours, the bodies of D-254 and D-255 continued finally reaching the skeletons. The clear, salt-like crust from the evaporated moisture had turned to a mix of dark red and brown. 
the average relative humidity remained at 14% until 35 hours elapsed time, averaging at 19%, 18.56% with significant figures. When applying significant figures to the control rooms, the average relative humidity has dropped from 20.17% to 19.96%. Note. I think it's safe to believe that SCP-622 may have some sort of chemical component that still lingers long after SCP-622 has dissolved. For future reference, let's do all testing outside of site 16 circulation system. Dr. Z. Test Log 622-4 Organic testing of SCP-622 to determine shelf life of chemical compound in an outdoor environment. Procedure. SCP-622 will be applied to a small patch of grass on the Site-16 testing Biosphere 7 and viewed through remote monitoring devices. Moisture measured and monitored by electronic instruments. For a control, testing Biosphere 2 and 1 were also monitored for humidity content, averaging at 68% and 73% relative humidity respectively. Results. Data expunged. See Addendum 622-2. Security Levels 3 and above refer to Document 622-A and 622-B. Test Log 622-4. Organic testing of SCP-622 to determine shelf life of chemical compound 05 personnel only in an outdoor environment. Procedure. SCP-622 will be applied to a small patch of grass on the Site-16 testing Biosphere 7 and viewed through remote monitoring devices. Moisture measured and monitored by electronic instruments. For a control, testing Biosphere 2 and 1 were also monitored for humidity content, averaging at 68% and 73% relative humidity respectively. Results Within the first minute of exposure, the humidity of Biosphere 7 dropped to 0%, forming a brown crust along where 622 was sprayed. Within two minutes of testing, all flora within Biosphere 7 had shriveled up, turning into a salt-like compound, similar to SCP-622. All of the mud within Biosphere 7 turned to dry, cracked dirt. After three minutes, Security notified testing staff that the surrounding plant life of Site-16 was beginning to turn brown outside of Biosphere 7. Despite the airtight nature of the biosphere, Site-16 staff dispatched to surround the area and stop SCP-622 from spreading. After five minutes, SCP-622 has covered over 0.017 square kilometers spreading at an estimated rate of 0.2 kilometers an hour, or roughly 3 meters per minute. Site-16 proceeded to dump water on the surrounding area to stop SCP-622 from spreading. SCP-622 quickly absorbs all water and continues spreading. Site-16 Command Level Staff immediately request to enact Protocol Gray. O5 approves. Protocol Gray enacted. Security Levels 3 and above refer to 622B. Security Levels 4 and 5 refer to Protocol Gray Containment Procedures. End Log. A message from O5 to General Staff. As many of you are undoubtedly aware, SCP-622 has broken out of containment at Site-16. While this does pose a possible threat, leading to an eventual NK-class Grey Goo end-of-the-world scenario, Foundation staff are doing their best to contain the problem. Site-16 staff have enacted Protocol Grey to slow the rate of SCP-622 spreading and are currently looking into how SCP-622 was able to breach the Biosphere testing facility. To help alleviate fears, here are a few facts that we would like you all to know. All of the biological SCPs at Site-16 have been secured and transferred away from the spread of SCP-622. Space will be slightly more cramped, but the situation is under control, and all of the SCPs are in proper containment. 
As of 7-18-12, SCP-622 has only spread a total of less than three square kilometers, and the rate has slowed, thanks to Protocol Gray. At the rate it's going, it will only be able to overtake Site-16 in seven years. Even then, we still have plenty of time before it reaches any urban areas. SCP-622 can be slowed down by water, especially fluoridated water. As long as we keep pumping over water to Site-16, it will buy us extra time until we can think of a solution. We have a list of all of the known companies that are still in possession of SCP-622 and are actively seeking to contain every last canister before they can be used. Lastly, I know some of you are shaky about Protocol Gray. It may come back to bite us, but I'd much rather worry about an XK-class end-of-the-world event in a few hundred years than an NK-class Grey Goo end-of-the-world event in the next few weeks. We'll deal with that then, but for now, Protocol Gray is buying us time. As long as we end Protocol Gray in the next ten years, I don't think there's anything we'll need to worry about. I will notify everyone once SCP-622 has been contained, and when Site-16 staff discover why it was able to breach containment. Carry on, 5 12 15 12 Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-621, Hypnobulbs, right now. Or for the complete course, Watch this playlist.